My name is Nicole and I'm from the Cochlear Engagement Team. So what we do is we help to navigate the pathway for someone who might be looking at needing a cochlear implant. And, and so what we do is we help you, whether that be to find an audiologist who specialises in cochlear implants or seeing an ENT, which is an ear, nose and throat surgeon. And what we do is we help you just with the whole process and where to go and what to do and who to speak to um, as close to your local area as possible. So we would have probably around 4,000 inquiries a year. So we're, we've had a lot of practice at it and it, it just really helps to, I guess, demystify the whole process and where to go and how to start. So today I wanted to talk to you about some of our most frequently asked questions. And what we find over time is there can become a little bit of a pattern of questions that can be asked. So the first one we're going to start with is what is the difference between a cochlear implant and a hearing aid? With a hearing aid, as many of you may know, it's easy to find how to purchase or to how to get a, a hearing implant, uh, sorry, a hearing aid. We know how to get a hearing test. But what happens when you get to that point where you feel like your hearing aids are no longer enough and you need to start exploring that next stage of your journey um, to better and healthier hearing. And so what, what um, the hearing aid does is it, it pumps volume into your ear. So you're getting sound and you're getting um, volume, but you can hear the sound, but you can't always understand the words. Whereas a cochlear implant is actually something that we is inserted right into the inner ear, into our cochlear itself, uh, because we have a lot of um, thousands and thousands of tiny, tiny little hair cells. And as they start to get damaged or even die, doesn't matter how much sound you pump into that ear, it's not gonna help because they can't actually receive the volume. So a cochlear implant bypasses the damaged areas and goes straight to the cochlear implant into the inner ear and does the work for you, sending that sound to the auditory nerve and into the brain. So that would be the difference. Um, so basically you hear clearer. Um, most people say they can hear the volume but they can't decipher the words and so that's that I think would be a really key difference between a hearing aid and a cochlear implant. Um, in a recent study, they said that about 8,000, um, sorry, a cochlear implant user can hear sentences eight times better than someone with hearing aids. So obviously that's going to vary depending, but basically um, that is, is the level of clarity that you, you're able to get from a cochlear implant. Okay, question number two. And this I would say would probably be our biggest question that we have, and that is, how much does it cost? Now, in terms of costs, we're very, very spoilt to be in Australia. Um, we have a couple of different pathways. I just wanna say one thing first, and that is that it does not cost $50,000. So for some reason, that number always seems to creep in um, and we get that us a lot, but that is actually not true, it's a myth. Now, we have a couple of different pathways. I, I would, I'm gonna focus on the two main ones today and that would be um, accessing through um, private health funds. So if you're in a private health fund, um, there is codes that we can give you so you can talk to your health fund about it and they will tell you immediately whether you're covered or not and it pretty much covers 100% of the cochlear implant itself. Well, it does cover 100% if you have a certain level, level of cover. Um, and then there may be some gaps possibly with your ENT, et cetera, but that would be um, worked out on an individual basis. The other way is through public funding. So if you did qualify for a cochlear implant, um, you can get the public funding um, as well through the New South Wales State Government. So that would be another way to be able to talk through with your health professional. And we can guide you on that, on that journey. All right, so the next question that we have is, am I too old for a cochlear implant? The answer is no. Um, I think cochlear 
in the past has there's always been you know discussion about babies and you know they see the gorgeous little videos and think oh it's just for children now we have newborn screening that is done in every baby that's born in Australia which is incredible and they are tested from the moment of birth so if there is a child that has hearing difficulty they will get put into um, a pathway very very early and very quickly um, to give them the most optimal outcomes for their learning and social future so that is incredible however you may be surprised to know that over 70 percent of cochlear implant recipients are over the age of 65. Um, so and so that is most of them are adults so 52 percent are over 65 and 70 percent are adults so we have an aging population and as you know hearing usually as like our eyesight can get worse over time and so that's why um, we're finding that people are exploring cochlear implants into their 80s and 90s i'm even looking after a 100 year old lady at the moment um, so the only thing that would be we would recommend you look at is that you are healthy enough to undergo an anesthetic and that is really the only stipulation as long as you qualify and you have a, a certain level of hearing loss to warrant having a cochlear implant okay so it let while we're sort of on that path so in terms of surgery um, I just want to pause there for a moment because I was meant to show you something and I didn't so I just want to show you this is a cochlear implant so basically this gets inserted just under the skin um, above the ear so there's a slight incision that goes through and this tiny bit I don't know if you can see it but there's a tiny little loop here that actually has 22 electrodes in it so it's just incredible um, and what that does is that itself is what is inserted into the cochlea into the inner ear so that's your implant and then we have the external device which is your sound processor so this sits I'll go this side this time this sits over the ear so that sits up there and this bit goes over the ear here and so how they talk to each other is these both have magnets Whoop. and they stick together like that through the skin and that's how they talk to each other and that's how we can get our environmental sounds and it's transferred into a digital code and sent through to our brain as we interpret sounds so it's amazing all right so back to the surgery um, what I would say is it's become a lot more streamlined over the years of technology advancing so usually a surgery would be around about one to two hours it is not brain surgery so it doesn't go anywhere near the brain what it does is it comes in so there's a slight incision above your ear and it gets inserted through there and into the back of the ear so this doesn't go anywhere near your brain so let me assure you you don't need to be concerned about that okay so as I said a, a, probably around one to two hours would be a standard surgery and usually your ENT surgeon would keep you overnight occasionally they might let you out that day um, but they'll usually keep you in just to make sure you're okay and that there's been no um, problems or any sort of um, that you're comfortable in terms of pain management usually um, either nothing or Panadol so it really is um, incredible the post surgical you, the, you there's not been a lot of problems at, at all with that so that's encouraging as well um, all of this would be fully checked out so that you know it's a process it's not instant so once an audiologist cleared you they may recommend you to see an ENT and they would do some imaging just to make sure that your anatomy is okay they know exactly what to expect and um, along with the anaesthetist to make sure that that you're fit enough to undergo a surgery but it, it really is has become a lot more streamlined over the time which is which is great news for us okay now who should investigate whether they have a cochlear implant um, so usually 
you know, when you get to a point where you feel like the hearing aids are no longer enough, we would ask three questions. So the first question I would say is, do you have trouble hearing children's voices or even female voices? So it's that high pitch frequency, those, those higher, higher sounds that, that you struggle with. Um, now the reason for that is because our cochlea, the higher frequencies are sitting at as we go in, in in the bottom, so they are the most exposed to any sort of damage. So, so that would be question number one. Do you struggle with hearing voices? The second question I would say is, do you struggle on the phone? Are you finding it really difficult to have conversations with people on the telephone and um, decipher their words? Do they sound muffled? Things like that. That would be another one. And then the third, the third one, which um, we get a, a lot of, of um, questions is when you're out in a social situation. So in a crowded place where there's maybe, maybe two or three more people, more than that, you really struggle um, and you just, end up feeling uh, nervous, isolated, struggling because you just can't keep up with the conversation and you, you're finding it hard to engage socially. And so that's a really big issue that we find for people and, and something that they really need to, um, is often the, the, the key kicker to, to getting them to exploring a, a cochlear implant. So they would be the th three things. And then finally, I just wanted to say, who do I talk to? I mean, that that's probably um, the question, where do I go from here? How do I get the information I need? So you can talk to us. Um, we are here to help you and guide you um, at Cochlear, our engagement team, and you can get us on um, email. Our email is hearinghelp, that's H-E-L-P, one word, hearinghelp at cochlear.com. You can also go to our website. So if you go to www.cochlear.com and at the top, sort of towards the middle, you'll see a little statement, find my nearest clinic. You can click on that. When you click on that, you can type in your um, suburb or your postcode. And what that will do is that will come up with all the different cochlear implant clinics in your area or as close to your area as possible and they can help you and guide you and um, make contact with them or we can put you in contact with a recipient that's another way we, we also do we help you to talk to people that have been through the same process so we'd love to help you through this journey it's been wonderful being with you today have an awesome weekend we have a question oh we have a question okay from Kerry from Kerry. When should you replace your cochlea after how many years? Oh, great question. Okay, so the question is, when should you replace your cochlea? Um, so that is a really good question. So there's two answers to that question. The first one is you don't. So you, in terms of the implant, so that's this bit, you do not need to replace that. We have designed these with our incredible research and development and engineers. So this does not need to be replaced. It's there to last a lifetime. And so you will know you should not ever have to replace this. In terms of the processor, um, we do have a three year warranty on it. You and we have plans that you can extend that. Um, but basically what we try to do is this is where the technology continues to get upgraded. So this is where um, we might bring out our new latest technologies. So for example, our Nuclear 7, um, we, we have the iPhone compatibility and Android compatibility. Um, it's the smallest and lightest on the market. And so it's, as you can tell, if you've had a hearing or cochlear for a while, they get smaller and lighter and in, more dynamic every time. So this is designed to be replaced if you, if you want it to be every sort of, whenever our new technology comes out or depending on your private health insurance, but as a general rule, sort of around every three to five years. So I hope that answers your question.